So the first thing we are going to do is deploy a new resource group. The reason for this is because the Meraki MX device deploys a managed application which will lock the resource group and prevent you associating any VNets or routing tables with the resource group. So once the resource group is created, we're going to create a new virtual network. This will be what we use for the LAN of the virtual Meraki appliance. You can use any address spacing here and associate it with the new resource group we have just created. Again, you need to make sure the address range is within the address space. So once that is deployed, we should be able to go into our resource group we created and see that the new virtual network is there. So if you look at the subnets, we can see that's the one we created. From there, we are going to deploy the Cisco Meraki appliance. Click create. So next we need to give the appliance a name, this can be anything you want. For the Meraki authentication token, we will need to get this from the Cisco Meraki dashboard. So you will need to create a new network within your dashboard. You can give this anything you want, but I always use something relevant to Azure. So that's Azure and the, the region we're going to be in. It's a security appliance so and we create from there need to add the virtual MX device into your newly created network and from there you need to click the generate authentication token copy that and go back into Azure and paste that in there we're going to create a new resource group and that is because the Resource group is a managed application and will not allow you to associate with an existing resource group. We're going to select the virtual network we created earlier and put that onto the default subnet which we created. There's no other options within that. For the VM size, you can leave this at default, but I used the lower pricing. Quick final validation of what we're deploying. Click OK to that. The device will now deploy and it, for me it took around 10 to 15 minutes to deploy. So if we look within here, we'll see that the virtual appliance that we deployed has created a managed resource group, which will actually contain a lock, which is why we have pre-deployed a VNet. If we go back into the Meraki dashboard, we should now see that the appliance has been provisioned. From there we can see that the appliance is online and if we look on the uplink it is important to note the LAN IP address which the appliance has been given. Later we're going to be adding routes against the appliance for the VPN. Next if we go to site to site VPN we're going to enable the appliance as a hub. I already have an appliance running remotely that we're going to associate with. We're going to add in the local network so this is the server's resource group I have running in Azure and also the Meraki LAN for testing. We're going to send these subnets across the tunnel 
And if we go onto another network, which I have an MX64 running, we're going to enable the VPN on here. And again, we're going to only enable the main subnet and not the client VPN subnet in this case. Go back into the Azure portal, if we look under the resource groups, you will see that the Meraki MX appliance I created earlier has created another resource group. I'm going to go into our, my servers resource group where I have a couple of servers deployed. I have an Ubuntu box and a Windows server. And then the servers VNet. You can look at the address space for the subnet associated with that and the subnets associated within the address space. If you've got the connected devices, you'll see the two servers deployed in their IP addressing. I'm going to create a peering to the Meraki VNet we created earlier. You can give this any name you like, but I always like to make it something relevant. You want to highlight the Meraki LAN. It's important you tick this box because any traffic coming over the VPN will not have originated within the Meraki LAN VNet. So without that tick, traffic will not flow from the VPN. Then you need to do the other side from the Meraki VNet we created and just create a peering session back to the servers. Again, you can look at the address basin and subnet associated with that VNet. And here we create the peering back between the Meraki LAN and the servers VNet I already have existing. You don't need to tick this box in this instance because all traffic from the servers VNet is going to be originating from that VNet. So from there, if we look at the VPN status, we should see that the Meraki is associated with the registry and we are exporting two, two subnets across the VPN. If we look at the command prompt running locally on my PC, we should be able to reach the LAN of the Meraki over the VPN. Again, if we look at the appliance status and the uplink, we can see that the LAN of the Meraki is responsive from my PC. I already have a routing table associated with my server's VNet, but you could create a new blank one. Currently, I have no root records within there, but it is associated with the server subnet. We are going to add a root for the VPN subnet at the other end. So this is a test network I have running. The subnet is 10.10.10 and the slash 24. And then the next hop gateway is going to be the LAN of the Meraki virtual appliance. And just to confirm that is my home subnet, I'll show you here. We go back into the server's resource group. Look at the server's VNet. You'll see the IPs again associated with my VMs. We should now be able to reach them from my desktop PC. We should hopefully be able to SSH, which we can, and log into it. We should be able to ping back to my machine at home, just to confirm the IP address. And there we go. On the Meraki status page, we should see traffic flowing from my PC, which is the source, to the Ubuntu server in Azure, which is the destination. Go 
we'll just try the Windows Server. So we should be able to log into this. And there we go, that's accessing the private IP of the Windows Server I have run in Azure via the Meraki site to site VPN. So on the Meraki status page, we can see traffic sourced from my home PC that we were testing on, and the destination is the Ubuntu and Windows Server.